In this video, I want to talk about the new features that are shipping as part of the 0.11.0 release of the Cake extension for Visual Studio Code. So the first one I want to talk about is if I go ahead and add a new build.cake file from the command palette here, what we're going to see is that that build.cake file opens up straight away in the editor, ready for editing. Now, that's a small feature enhancement, but we like to think that it is adding to the overall usability of the Cake extension. So it, in the previous uh, versions of uh, the Cake extension, that build.cake file would have been added to this, the Explorer on the left-hand side, but it wouldn't, wouldn't have opened. Uh, the next feature I want to talk about was uh, submitted by a a community member and uh, that community member's name I'm probably going to get wrong uh, but all the details are in the release notes uh, that goes along with this so I'd encourage you to go have and look look for them uh, but I'm going to go with it was Jorge so Jorge has added these uh, code lens features that you'll see happening here now what this is if we have a look uh, in previous versions of this extension if we were to go ahead and say run task then what happens is that the cake extension for Visual Studio Code has enumerated this file and it's tried to find all the tasks that are available and it uh, adds them to the command palette ready for executing that task. So I can click on say run default task and what that will do is it'll run that task and you'll see the output in the command window below. Now what Jorge has been able to add is that he's been able to add this code lens feature so that this run task option will now appear directly within the, uh, bit, the cake file itself ready for executing that task. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, clear that out. So I'm just going to click on this run task directly here and it's going to do the exact same things it did before. It's still running that task and it's executing it uh, in the command when, uh, the command when, uh, output is shown uh, in the terminal at the bottom there. But the other exciting thing is that uh, I can actually debug this task directly. Now in the current version of uh, the Visual Studio Code extension for Cake, what you would have had to do is you would have had to create a launch.json file and you would have had to download um, other debug dependencies in order to make that all work together. So what this little uh, code lens overview is going to do is do all of that work for you. So now I can simply go ahead and say debug task and what it's going to do is it's going to download all the dependencies, make sure that they're available, and then it's going to allow you to uh, debug this build.cake file. So now we've got this breakpoint being executed, and then I can just uh, F10 over that as I normally would, and then uh, play that build.cake file out to, to its completion. So this is quite a, a, an interesting feature, and what it brings with it is a number of settings that allow you to control that. Because what's happened just now is that uh, by default, it is running with the core CLR uh, runtime with uh, the default settings uh, for the build.cake file, where it's located, uh, and also where that, that runner is located. So if we go ahead and look in the settings file within Visual Studio Code, and we search in here for cake, we'll see that there's a section, entire section here that allows you to control how you want that debugging session to work. And you can override this with your own settings. Um, so like I say, by default, it's running core CLR, but you could change that to be uh, the mono runtime if that's what you need, or and you can specify uh, the different things in here uh, to where the actual program is located. So if you're using the cake.exe uh, or you're using a custom configuration file, uh, cu custom configuration location for your tools folder, you can modify all that in here uh, in order for that those uh, code line features to actually function. Uh, now we've enabled this feature uh, out of the box, but if you're not interested in having this feature, um, then you can obviously uh, turn it off. Um, so all of these settings are documented in our uh, GitHub repository, and I encourage you to take a look at those um, to find out if there's anything in there that, that, that's of interest to you. The next feature that was actually added by Jorge as well is another very interesting feature. So for the longest time, we've been able to run uh, snippets in Visual Studio Code. Let me just find it. Uh, if I run a snippet, now these snippets allow the addition of things like add-ins. So by default, if I wanted to add uh, the cake.git extension as an example, then I can quite quickly uh, tab through that snippet in order to uh, add in all the information that I need. Now that requires that I know the name of the extension and it requires me to know the name of the, uh, the sorry, it requires me to know the uh, 
version number of the extension that's available. So that's not bad, but I think we can do better. And Jorge has actually proven that. So now if we go back up to the command palette, what we have now are three new commands that are for add a module from NuGet, add an add-in from NuGet, and also add a tool from NuGet. So let's use the add-in as an example. What this gives us is the ability to search NuGet for cake extensions. So I'm just going to use uh, cake dot as the search criteria here. I'm going to hit enter. And what I'm going to get back is a list of all of the uh, NuGet packages on NuGet.org that have cake dot in their uh, name. So that the, the one that I was interested in was cake.git. So if I click on that, what it's then going to show me is all of the available versions of that package. So let's go ahead and just pick the latest one, which is 0 0.17.0. And what that's going to do is it's going to add in that add-in uh, directive to the top of my cake file there. So and to, to follow up with that example, if we use uh, the other one, so let's go back to a command palette and use, say, the add module from NuGet. And let's say we wanted to use the build systems module. So I'm going to search for cake.build. I'm going to find that module there, and I'm going to find out that 0.3.0 is the re most recent version of that add-in. And again, it's just added that entry into the top of my build.k file there. So hopefully that's going to provide some functionality in terms of being able to quite quickly add in those tools, those add-ins, and those modules uh, into your cake files. The final feature that I want to talk about uh, was with regard to uh, the cake.config file. So out of the box, there is the ability to add a cake.config file. And this is a file that controls how the internals of cake actually function. What the tools folder is, what the add-ins folder is, what the modules folder is, whether or not you're skipping verification, all of those settings that uh, control how cake runs. Now, in previous versions of this extension, it didn't actually respect that cake.config file. So even though I maybe changed the location of that tools folder to say something like tools one and that add-ins folder to be add-ins one and modules one, when I ran any commands from the command palette that actually use those locations, it would actually just put them into the default locations. It wouldn't actually respect the values in the cake.config file. So right now in my tools folder, I've got cake and cake.coreclr. But as an example of the change that I've made here, let's go ahead and download uh, cake.bakery, which will it comes when we do uh, the installation of IntelliSense support. So if I do that, what we'll see here now is that we've it's created a tools one folder, which is what I've got within my cake.config file, and then it's placed the uh, tool directly into that folder rather than into the uh, default tools folder that it otherwise would have done. Now I have to give a th big thank you to the guys of uh, Threaten uh, 37 because this feature was actually one of the ones that was added as part of the Noah Bunga that was held in the Threaten offices last year. Uh, I got invited along to represent Cake at their Noah Bunga which is a, uh, a yearly event that they do where they give back to open source projects uh, by allowing their employees to uh, contribute back via pull requests uh, into projects that are interested in. So this was one of the features that was added as part of that. So we'd like to say thank you to uh, Threaten for that. And that for that's pretty much it for the what I want to show you as part of this release. There were some other minor things in terms of the way the build works and uh, how things are handled. But uh, if you're interested in that, uh, there's a full set of release notes that goes into more detail. Uh, hopefully these are, uh, provide some uh, interest to you. And if you're interested in seeing any other features coming out within this Cake extension for Visual Studio Code, uh, feel free to get in touch and let us know uh, what you want. Thanks.